<laughs> All right, so our next speaker uh, is Peter Hardy. So by day, Peter is a sysadmin orchestrating thousands of computers running CI services for a software development company, but by night, he's an amateur hardware hacker, counting individual bytes in assorted Arduino-based projects, and today he's gonna tell us about some of his blinking lights. So please welcome Peter. Um, hi, thank you. Uh, as I, in the spirit of teaching people to fish, I'm not just going to talk about what I've done. I really want to explain how these systems work, and I kind of want to go into a little bit of detail. Um, I'm assuming that you're all very intelligent, lovely people who happen to not know much about electronics yet. So I'm going to start really simple, uh, but we are going fairly fast, so apologies in advance. Um, this is Hello World on an Arduino. You take, it's called Blink. You take a tiny little LED, you plug it into one of your GPIO pins on your Arduino, and you write a dozen lines of code, and the LED turns on and off. Um, hence the name, it blinks. I don't know if that was obvious or not. Uh, I'm going to quickly explain what's happening there with my little simulator thingy. Uh, this is a circuit symbol for a, an LED. It's a diode with some little uh, thingalings hanging off the top. That's an RED on the, a resistor on the side. It's called, I'm using that as a current limiting resistor. Um, it's stopping too much power from throwing, flowing through the LED. They're very sensitive devices. If you give them too much power, they turn on very brightly, very briefly. And then the magic <laughs> smoke gets out. So an Arduino has 14 of these little IO pins. So you might go, all right, this is great. I've got my little blinking thing. I'm going to add a few more lights. And you can write code to do different things on, with those lights. Sooner or later, you're going to run out of pins. Um, you're either going to have other devices that are, you're trying to use as well, or you just plain want to add the 15th. Um, if you're like me, you very quickly got up to the 50th. But that's a different matter. So I'm going to talk about how you can go about getting more lights out of these 14 pins. But to do that, I need to go on to my next new component, which is a transistor. Transistors are amazing devices. They have lots of different uses. We're going to use ours today just as a kind of a digital switch, an electronic switch. Um, it has three leads on it. And a resistor will let current flow from the collector and out of the emitter here, but only if there is a signal on the middle pin there. Um, I'm going to demonstrate that really quickly with the same circuit that we had before. There's a resistor here and an LED here, but um, there's no current flowing through right now until I click that button. Still with me? Fantastic. So that's how a transistor works. Now that we know how this works, I'm going to jump on to how we can use that to do something called multiplexing. Um, to multiplex your LEDs, what you do is you arrange them all in a grid. And for all the rows in the, for all the columns in the grid, you connect the positive leads on the LEDs all together, and you can just feed your microcontroller pin into that. And for all of the LEDs in a row, you connect all the neg negative leads together. That goes into your transistor. This is controlled by a microcontroller pin again. It goes to ground. There we go. Um, I can demonstrate this now. I can close this here. Nothing's happening because we don't have any of these yet. But if I close one of these switches, Close one of these switches. Now have a route to ground, and that flows through. Um, works for all these as well. This is a really trivial example. It's a really terrible example because I've got four lights and I'm still using four IOs. But it is something that scars up really quickly. And this is much bigger. Um, nine columns across. Uh, so I've got nine inputs here, current limiting resistor on all of those, and three rows, God. Uh, so 12 inputs, which um, fits in quite nicely with the 14 I.O. pins on my Arduino. And the way that I would use this is I would write code that turns on each of these, uh, strobe this top row on and off, then you can change them, strobe the middle row on and off, and so on and so forth. You microcontroller loops through these really fast, which is fine because computers are doing good at doing lots of loopy things really fast. And um, you can create a persistence of vision effect that makes it look like you've got lots of LEDs light up. And so you can make animations and do all sorts of cool stuff like that. Um, hopefully, at this point, you are wondering why I've got nine across and three down and only 27 lights when I could go six and six and get 36. 
to which I say these nine columns with three rows can be rearranged into one of my favorite little toys, an LED cube. Um, that's not mine, unfortunately. One of the first Arduino projects I ever built several years ago was an LED cube that looks exactly like that. And I sat around for years and sat around for years until I moved house six months ago when it finally went to e-waste. And then shortly afterward, Chris sent out a CFP for this mini-conf. Um, very disappointed. But you can see here, there's the, oops, go back. Go back. Spoilers. Um, you can see the nine current limiting resistors here. Go back again. This is a new computer, and I have no idea how to use it. And the three transistors. Uh, sooner or later, you are going to want to get more out of your thing than even that. The next trick we have is shift registers. Shift registers are very simply, um, I'm not going to demo it too much, and I'm not going to explain all the intricacies, but it lets you feed serial data in on this data in pin, and it will convert it to parallel output across the eight pins on the bottom. Most of the shift registers you'll see are eight pins, maybe 16 pins, which is really convenient because you can feed data in a byte at a time. Uh, so as you are feeding bits in on the data in thing, the first bit will appear on Q0. You feed the next bit in, the data will shift across, shift across. Um, I'm in the way, I just realized, I'm sorry about that. But you can see they're on the bottom. Um, there is a data out pin on the right hand side there, which means that as you keep shifting data in, um, the bits that are on Q7 will get shifted out on the data out. This is really good because it means you can daisy chain them. Uh, so as you keep feeding data in, it will keep being fed across. Hope that's straightforward. We're all still with me? Very good. Um, on its own, a shift register is great. Uh, it's got eight outputs, so you can just plug LEDs straight onto those outputs. Uh, you can um, get a seven-segment display and just attach that to a shift register and very quickly and easily drive digits like this. But if you combine these shift registers with the multiplexing stuff that we've just done, you find yourself having many, many, many hundreds of LEDs fairly easily controllable with a handful of bytes fed through shift registers. Um, I am going to demonstrate this really quickly. This is a commercial module. Um, you can buy these online for 30 or 40 bucks. It's 32 by 16 pixels, which means 512 LEDs. And it has a serial interface which needs just four pins on an Arduino. Um, quite often see them in shops and things. Uh, they're designed for scrolling text sideways, so you can find out how much you're paying for all of these ridiculous displays you're buying. I'm not using it for that at all. Instead, I play Tetris on them. Um, this is a prototype. The collision detection's a little bit off. I'm sorry. But... <laughs> It's yeah. three pins on an Uno, uh, Arduino, you know. Um, write your code a little bit better than I have, and you've got plenty of room left over to plug in your joystick and your buttons, and you can play Tetris on a ridiculously oversized display. Uh, true, true, true. What am I up to? So uh, just because you have your matrix of LEDs, um, this is in a literal grid. Um, I'm going to show you an example now where they're not in a literal grid. Um, they're wired in a logical grid, but they don't have to be arranged like that. This is a project that I was going to talk about today, but I'm only going to mention it briefly. It's a very large hardware interface for Kerbal Space Program. I think people who have seen me do this two years ago have seen me talk about this before. Um, I, I'm only going to talk about these little blue cluster of lights in the middle, though. That's 16 seven-segment digits and a handful of other LEDs around it, uh, a total of 160 lights in that little connection, collection. Um, I'm not using shift register to drive it. I'm using dedicated uh, LED display drivers, which are functionally identical to the shift registers we've used, but they're a little bit fancier. They do all of the current limiting already, so I don't need to worry about thousands of uh, resistors. And they can do other little tricks like um, just change the in <coughs> LED intensity. These are the two circuit boards that I had to design and fabricate to build that control panel. The outlined parts are the three LED display drivers that I had to daisy chain together to run those 160 lights. 
Um, as you can see, lots of lines everywhere because every single LED needs two connections back to a display driver. So that's big. It's very complicated. The next thing I want to talk about is our wonderful little addressable LEDs, which go the completely opposite direction. Um, this LED, that big circle there, is a. Uh, it's mounted. The it's in a 50/50 surface mount component. So that big circle is in a small enclosure, five mil on a side which is very small. Um, each, con each LED has its own controller embedded in the package. So your LED now only has power in, power out, and uh, data in and data out, and you can just daisy chain all of your LEDs together. Um, simple serial protocol, like all of our other controllers that we've talked about so far, and driving lengths of several thousand of these is a fairly trivial matter with an Arduino. Um, this is something else that I built, uh, another part of the control panel. It's an enunciator panel, um, which is just a bunch of indicator lights. If you've ever been in a light aircraft, you may have seen something very similar on the console. And I built this by cutting a Perspex box, divided it up into sections, drilled a hole in the bottom of each section, glued an addressable LED into the bottom, and wired it up like that. Um, the red, wire, red and black wires are for power, and I think you can just see the columns where the power is hooked up, and then there is one blue data wire that daisy chains all of those lights together. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, 20 lights there, and um, I have three wires going to it, and an Arduino that is able to turn them all on and off and control the intensity and what have you. Uh, what else have I got? Hey, that's me. <laughs> um, last year, my makerspace was commissioned to do a to build some little. Oh, cool! Thank you. Was to commissioned to build little robots for a show that the Australian Museum down the road was putting on. So I helped design these robots. Um, I put some lights on the robots because, let's face it, I'm putting lights on everything now. <laughs> And then I designed those little goggles. Um, Adafruit make addressable LED modules in a baffling variety of sizes and shapes, uh, including lots of ring modules. So it's just a circuit board with, in this case, 16 lights around the outside. And you just you can string those together. Um, the 16 ones happen to be just the right size to fit in a pair of welding goggles. So I toddled to Bunnings, bought a pair of welding goggles, popped the dark glass out two of these modules in, and a tiny little Arduino Nano on the side. Uh, it's a fun one-day project, really. This is the final thing I have to talk about. I'm going much faster than I planned. Um, this is a liquor cabinet that my partner owned and really wanted it illuminated. So I went out and bought the other way that you buy these little addressable LED strips is long, flexible strips like this. Uh, very easy to cut to length that you need, solder your wires on, and off you go. I'm using a Raspberry Pi for it there. Uh, so at the top left there, you can see me making sure that it all worked because I'd never hooked one of these up to a Raspberry <coughs> Pi before. Um, you can just see how I've very professionally mounted it to the inside of the shelf with some tape. And... Uh, a few strips of these flexible LEDs up the top there and then there and there, and suddenly you can do that. Um, because it's on a Raspberry Pi, it sits on my network. It's remotely controllable. I could turn it on and off right now, but my girlfriend would probably be annoyed if I did that. And uh, the other thing, when we were talking about how I would do this, um, my partner said to me, do you know, wouldn't it be funny if the lights throbbed in time to music. This was a very long time ago. I don't think she knew me that well, and I'm fairly sure she thought she was joking. <laughs> uh, certainly wasn't expecting me to go, yeah, all right. Uh, because it's a Raspberry Pi, I can just feed audio in, and I adapted a Raspberry Pi project that is designed for driving 
large Christmas light displays, uh, a little bit of hacking, and I'm able to have it throb in time to music, which unfortunately I can't show you. Um, my video didn't work, so I have no demo. Please just take my word that it actually doesn't. <laughs> Um, I can probably arrange video when I get home again. We'll see how I go. Um, that's all I've got. I thought that this would take a lot longer than it has. Please go and make something fun. Um, everything that I build is all sitting in my Bitbucket account because I work for Atlassian. Questions? Do it. Um, fantastic talk, thanks. Uh, I have a degree in physics and doing the circuit diagrams does my head in. Um, so, sort of a two-part question. One, was that piece of software you were showing at the beginning, does that do the calculations for whether, like, how strong a resistor you need to fit into this circuit to make it not blink uh, lower? This, this is a piece of software called, let me find it. I circuit. I circuit. Yeah. Um, not really. It, it doesn't do the calculations on <laughs> current strength or anything like that. No, uh, it will show you. So I could um, turn this on and turn this on, and it will tell me how much current is going through that. Um, so right now, here we go. Like this is pulling. Uh, where is it? Twenty-one milliamps. Um, I can turn on more. And find out. Um, so, drawing 51 milliamps total. Okay. Uh, so, but I suppose the follow-up to that is, how do you learn to to put those circuits together and how to select the right resistors and whatnot? Is it? Are there any good resources to point out to? Um, to I go to Google and type in lead resistor calculator. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have any better than that. Yeah. Um, mostly, it's just I actually just guess the majority of the time. Uh, you've got a fair bit of latitude in resistor values, in my experience at least. Hi. Hello. Um, that was fun. Um, can you go back to the multi-chip lead? Okay. Now look at the chip. There's three unused bond outs. Do you know what they do? I have no idea. This will be a WS2812. Um, I'm going to write that down and look it up. <laughs> but that might be nice. Um, I, I would hesitate to try and do anything with them because that's under a bonded piece of plastic and, yeah, that chip is less than a millimetre across. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> hey, give it a try. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just say, I'm an electronics engineer, so I'll just give a s small thing about LEDs. When you go to buy them, uh, they typically have a current rating. So LED brightness is a function of the current that they, that's going through them. So yes. they typically have a current rating, so just uh, put a resistor that will sort of yeah. drop the rest uh, of the voltage. Uh, yeah, so uh, there should be a data sheet along with it, which will say the forward voltage and the current, and you can just plug those into a calculator and it'll sort out resistor for you. 